Having seen a metallic looking pupa swim by wiggling, the challenge to me was how to tie a fly that simulates this motion. The metal-like sheen, segmentation, and the swimming motion shown by the midge pupa suggested to me that a necklace chain could simulate the wiggling pupa that in fact looks a lot like a serpentine chain. Necklace chain also has the heft to get the fly hanging down at the end of the dropper near the bottom of the stream where it should be fished. So I tied the chain midge pupa. How to tie the chain midge pupa. I'm starting off today with a hook in the vise. It's a Tiemco 2488 size 22. I'm going to be tying that on the uh, chain with the uh, Nano Silk 20D in black. I've also uh, prepared the chain already. Following this video, there's a short segment on how to form these loops in the chain, as well as how to open up the chain and loosen up the chain to make it more flexible. These serpentine chains are designed not to kink on your neck, and so they have a twist in them. And so you have to take that twist out to get full flexibility. Also, there's the uh, fly tying segments followed by the recipe and where to buy the chain. All right, so I'm going to tie in with the 20D Nano Silk, a short thread base near the head. I'm using a single edge razor blade to avoid the tag in as recommended by the manufacturer. And now I'm going to take my chain segment with the loop eye, as you can see, and it's on 36 gauge stainless uh, steel wire, which is about a tenth of a millimeter wire. You have to go pretty fine wires because these are 0.2 millimeter chains. So I get a few wraps on there. I don't worry about snugging up the uh, loop. I didn't, until I have it in place, but I don't want to over tighten. I have to leave that loop open uh, so there's flexibility and movement between the hook and the chain. And so then I wrap it over itself and tie it in again with the thread. This is to prevent the wire from pulling out easily. There we go. Now I got to Make sure I cover the wire. In the head, and I'm forming up a thicker head to look like the pupa with the wing pads. And, okay, now I'm going to whip finish. I finish, whip finish twice with these really slick nano silks just to make sure I don't unravel. I hate changing flies. So then I'm going to cut it off now with the razor there. And here you can see the wriggling action, the swimming action that I'm getting. But I'm going to cut it off using an old pair of scissors to a reasonable length for a, for a pupa. There. You can see it's the swimming action you can get out of these guys. Okay, I often just fish it like this after a double whip finish, but if you want a glossy head, you can apply a small amount of the Solar Res Thin Hard Formula. The key is it's got to be a small amount of adhesive because you don't want to get it either in the eye which you can punch out, but you definitely don't want to get it back in that loop. 
So I'm using the toothpick to control volume and placement, and also I can remove excess if necessary. Okay, then to finish with the light. And I may have gotten a little cement in there. Oh, there we go, it's just hanging up a little bit. So there you have the chain pupa with the swimming action, the segmentation, and the heft to get it down to the bottom of the stream where the fish usually are. I have to show you another technique um, for tying the chain fly. You can see here, this is a piece of gold wire, the serpentine wire. And you can see that there's a twist in this. And that twist is in there to keep it from kinking when it's on your neck. However, it makes the chain pretty stiff. Um, and we have to unwind it a bit for two reasons. One is to make it more flexible. And two is to open up some of these eyes so we can get the thin piece of stainless steel wire, 36 gauge wire, through an eye of the chain loop to then tie it into the uh, fly itself. So here we're going to take this and put it in the vise like this. And by inspection, you try to see the which way the twist going. I think it has to be untwisted this way. So taking my little four inch locking pliers, I get a grip on it. Always have a hard time getting a grip. <laughs> and I turn the chain to try and open it up and I pull it. Physically pull on the chain slightly to get those eyes open up in the loops. So then I can thread in the 36 gauge wire. It's a delicate process. These, these are brass chains that are gold plated and so they are a little tender. But there you can see how much looser this chain has got for this swimming motion that we want on the midge pupa. Here's the technique I use to make the loop to tie in the chain into the uh, midge pupa. Um, first of all, I take this is a much heavier piece of wire than I'd normally use. This is 40 pound test and I wanted it thicker so you could see what's going on. Usually I'd use a 36 gauge stainless steel wire that I get from Amazon. Um, so you, I've cut off a short piece of this and I put a, a pin in the vise that I'm going to bend this around to form the loop like this. And then I like to try and squeeze it. Up against the needle to form the loop. Here you can see. So it's a little like two millimeter loop that I'm gonna to use to thread the chain on and then tie that into the thorax of the fly as you'll see in the fly tying video. To get the fly to wiggle, I use a Euro-nymphing rig with an anchor fly on the point that's heavy enough in a given flow regime to allow bottom bouncing. Bottom bouncing induces a subtle jigging action that simulates a swimming motion in the dropper fly. 